How's it going, Gray Boys? It is week 10. We're sitting at six and three. We've got a couple of nice wins recently under our belt, and we are entering into what should be the easiest stretch uh, of our season here. We go up against a three and four Indiana this week, and the Hoosiers, well, they're not, they're, they're struggling. It's not looking good. I think they might have just won their most recent game, but we have been dominating teams, and they are a lower overall team than we are which is incredibly rare for us. So we've been beating really good teams. You got to feel confident that a team that's worse than us, we have a chance at. They beat a two and five Michigan State, who we will be playing soon uh, by a touchdown. Not looking good. Other than that, some not terrible losses, but losses nonetheless. And uh, I was going to say they were able to beat Kansas and it took them to overtime. But this is a five and one Kansas school whose only loss is to Indiana. So it seems that this one is kind of all over the board, but we'll just hope for the best. Uh, the next games after this, we've got Michigan State, who we know is like two and five. We've got a bad Maryland, and then I think that's it. So just a couple of games left in this season. We're going to hope to get things done. And recruiting wise, we don't have a whole lot that we can do right now. We do have a visit that we can schedule. So we'll try and get that one. Jesse Jones, the 69 overall guard. We're fighting with Cincinnati, 600 points behind the Bearcats. Uh, they have their visit week 14. We could go week 15 in the bye, but it's better to go week 12 against Michigan State. Get that uh, home game settled in and try and get as many extra points for beating a conference team as possible. So we are going into this game sitting at number 17 in the country. We are 12th in the uh, college football playoff poll, but that's not the one that uh, is going to be displayed right now. So hopefully uh, both polls kind of merge and we can just continue to climb up a 72 overall for Indiana. The Hoosiers not looking good. 72 offense and a 73 defense. It's been a long time since those bars have been in our favor. We are on the road. But man, we got to feel really confident about this one. Where are alternate ones as we head to Indiana? And we're going to go with the Bicentennial uh, jerseys for the Hoosiers. I don't know. Maybe if they dress like an older team, they'll play a little bit better. I honestly have no idea if that makes any sense whatsoever. But <laughs> there we are. Offensively, they're terrible. They're running the ball decently well. But with us stopping the run uh, as well as we have been, I'm not sure what their offense is going to be capable of. Of course, typically we play to our opponent's level. So I wouldn't be surprised if they end up beating us. Uh, their defense is actually pretty solid. They don't give up a crazy amount of points and they certainly don't give up a lot of yards. But uh, like always, if Maurice Tate can just start to uh, get a rhythm going, our offense seems to start to become pretty uh, impossible to stop. Top players, 82 overalls, corner punter in the center. So finally, there's a team that we are better in that regards. Frank Blair, Dern Finch are on hot streaks, which is nice. Injuries to a center. Who knows if it's the same center as uh, is a top player and a running back out for three weeks with a bruised knee. So again, it just feels like this should be a cakewalk of a game for us. Obviously, conference opponent, we can't overlook them too much. This has trap game written all over it, but... We're just going to try and go in, get the job done, and get home. Well, here we are. Memorial Stadium in Indiana. Hoping for the best. Again, just trying to make this a quick victory. That's always the goal, but it should be more possible than a lot of other weeks. We lose the toss, so we'll be starting with the football. And of course, it's Frank Blair back to return on this one. We'll see what we can do. Ron Johnson, the third out towards the edge, trying to give some blocks. Frank, I've been trying to do a little bit too much all season long with these returns, and it's really not helping. So first down, we will set up, uh, what, the 17-yard line? Give it to Durham Finch Jr. on the handoff, and he's going to get a just back to the line of scrimmage. Thought he was going to get a yard out of it, but good stop from the Indiana defensive line. Problem here is that we need to be... Uh, trying to get to a point where Maurice can feel comfortable throwing, but they are bringing pressure, which scares me. Let's flip this play. I don't want Maurice running into a blitzing safety if we can avoid it. We just need some decent blocks on the read. He's going to be able to keep it. Will the blocks be there? No. And Maurice takes a shot and loses three yards in the process. Well, I should have known that this is exactly how this game would go. Going to go with a slip screen because we can't pass otherwise with Maurice. Should have thrown a screen on second down. Slip screen caught. Can he cut it back inside? A couple of blocks. 
And he got seven yards. Well short of the line to gain, though, so we're going to have to punt this one away. Going three and out. Not good. Certainly, we would like to do a little bit better than that. But, you know, we are on the road. Takes a little bit of time to warm up, especially as it's getting a little bit later in the season. A very fieldable punt for Jones. Oh, my gosh. Ron Johnson just shattered him, though. Thankfully, we kept them on the good side of the 50 as we're bringing pressure, expecting runs immediately. And that's just a immediate penalty on the offensive line all right well first and 15 probably don't need to bring as much pressure they will hand it off that looked like a little triple option and they get nine yards basically we're just gonna rely on our defensive backs to jam their wide receivers at the line so if they do decide to not run the ball it doesn't hurt us ron johnson does enough to force the third down and we'll see if we can force these guys to go three and out as well. We're bringing pressure on this third one, trying to stuff the gap. It's a handoff up the middle, and Carter's there for the stop. It's a loss of one. They might go for this, but the defense is held pretty well here. And on fourth and two, it's the offense still on the field. We'll see what we can do. It's trying to slow these guys down. They're going to step back to pass. Plenty of time, but the pass is dropped. A turnover on downs. Even if he caught it, I think he might have been short. But just getting pressure on the quarterback forced him to throw it early, and it works out. So just like that, uh, a four and out for the defense. Good job holding them there. Going to try a pass. I didn't throw it who I wanted to throw it to. A, Zach Wilson was wide open on that corner route. When I called the play, it was uh, Durham Finch coming out of the backfield. I wanted to throw that little swing too, but just, I don't know, didn't look like a good option. This time, try to get the pitch out, Durham. Moving around, breaks a tackle, throws in a spin move, and he gets almost the first first down of the game. Let's see if he can do it on this attempt. We're just going to give it to him right up the middle. Just drop the shoulders, try to fight through any contact, and there it is. Move the chains, keep the drive alive. We can start to build some momentum here on offense. All right, this is probably a mistake, but again, I'm looking to pass with Maurice. Just go with the dump off, give it to Smith, and that's a good pickup. Great first down, and an easy throw for him to complete as well. So Maurice, two of three, two completions in a row. We're going to risk it here, looking for another one. Y is open, gets it to Wilson, he breaks a tackle, and he's got eight yards as well. We know that this is not a good defense that we're playing against, so we should be able to put up big numbers. But the question is, where's that going to come from? Durham Finch has a big spin move to make positive yards out of that play. And I'm going to be a maniac here. <laughs> There's no way this one works. I'm trying it anyways. The flea flicker. Will we have a chance just to even get the throw off? X could be open. Terrible throw. It was going to be in the double coverage. Listen, sometimes I just want to have fun, but the flea flicker almost never works for us. So it's now third and five, somewhere along the edges of our field goal range, but this is obviously four down territory. I'm scoring a touchdown here. Even if we're losing a play and it's gonna be fourth and six. We'll see, is Indiana gonna have a chance to still be the team to score first on the read option, handing it off Durham Finch, able to make his way forward. Drive stays alive, feeling confident now. Inside a minute left in this first quarter already. And it's time for Maurice to have a nice throw. Maybe for a touchdown. Looking for X over the middle. A tough throw. Wilson holds on to it through the contact. It's first and goal just like that. We're a yard and a half shy of the goal line. So it's time for Courtney Smith just to try and pound it up the middle. Head down. Got to the line of scrimmage. I feel like maybe he got a half a yard or something. It's just like a couple of inches closer. How about Stan Williams? Can he get one up the middle? Pushing into the end zone. There it is. I don't know. Maybe took a little bit longer than I was expecting to find the end zone, but we'll take that. Well, let's boot this one away. Jones kicking it, I think, to another Jones. Who's going to have the upper hand on that one? Decent kick. Decent start to the return. He's breaking a tackle, and they get across the 25. Well, let's keep the onslaught coming. Can't afford to let these guys try to run the ball. Quarterback gets the option. He pitches it out. It goes to the ground, and Sims is going to recover it. Oh, it's not often you see the CPU miss up an option like that. London maybe should have had a chance at a scoop and score, but Sims able to recover the football. And I just have a feeling that that might be the downfall for Indiana in this game. If we're able to score so quickly on this drive... 
it's going to be looking really, really bad for the Hoosiers. And speaking of which, that's the end of the first quarter. So at the end of one, up 7 nothing, we can take that. Feel okay about it. Defense got a decent stop their first time out and just forced a turnover. Uh, so the offense just needs to crank it up a little bit more and we will be comfortable. But it's going to be this second quarter that really decides how this is going to go for us. A, open, Mitchell, touchdown for Sean. Good throw for Maurice Tate. It feels like maybe he's started to warm up. And just like that, it's 14-0. All right, well, let's boot it away again. See what this can do for us. Maybe we can force another turnover. I don't expect it, but I certainly would love it. At some point during this game, I'm expecting Indiana to abandon the run. Hopefully it's not too soon because we're bringing pressure as that's a good stop. Brandon Ford just kind of ran into a pile there and couldn't get through. Second and 10 now. See what we can do trying to stop him. Again, handed off. Dallas Miller were there to get the stop. Gave up five yards, but it is now third down. And the good news about that last play is we didn't have to bring a blitz, and I'm not bringing one on this third down either. Could be detrimental, but I'll allow them to step back, and the quarterback's going to take a huge sack, a loss of eight. I don't know who that is. Clinton Whitfield getting back there. Fourth and 13 and another three and out for Indiana. This one's starting to fall apart in a hurry for the Hoosiers. If we can score before the three minute mark in the second quarter, I don't know if they're going to be able to come back. Certainly, it feels like we're finally playing a team with a lower overall than us. We ran one triple option a little bit ago. We're going to try another one. I feel like this could go for a lot. Oh, maybe not. Stan Williams getting it. Stan Williams. Not getting the blocks. Did you see that? He had an option to pitch the ball there for a second. I was tempted to do it. Instead, though, just uh, a first down. 84 total yards for us to two for Indiana. The Hoosiers getting just beaten around right now. Outside the pocket. X is wide open over the middle of the field. It's Gentry and Jody. Little step back cheese to get a couple extra yards on the play. This one. Finally going according to plan, and we actually are looking like a top 20 team, which is a little bit rare for us at times. Term Finch will take us inside the five, and I'm going to call a touchdown on the next play. All right, I've called a touchdown. I don't know if this is going to work. I saw a play in my playbook I've never seen before. Power slot screen. I don't know. We're throwing it to Jeff Fontenot. We'll see what happens. The play action throwing it. He caught it, but he, he lost a yard. <laughs> I guess one of the key parts to that screen is you need to be able to block somebody. And certainly that didn't happen. How about a handoff up the middle? That one's going to be good for six. 21 to nothing. 3.15 left in the second quarter. We're going to be burning the clock a lot. We might see a lot of the second team offense and defense in the second half. At the start of this game, I was feeling like it was a trap game. And we still could see something crazy if we take our foot off the gas a little bit too early, but... I don't know. I'm feeling a lot more confident now. Hoosiers are still lining up, looking like they want to bring a lot of pressure. See what we can do with that. Hand off out towards the edge. It's like a halfback pass. Blair is going to get the credit for the sack. Actually, they call it a run, but still a tackle for loss. Guess I got to give them credit for trying something different, but that one just absolutely did not work. Second and 12. Hand off out towards the edge. That one gets hit in the backfield, and... Three more white jerseys show up to drop him for a loss of two. And just like that, it's third and 14. And they're lining up looking like they want to run the ball here. Uh, this is awfully interesting to say the least. I have no idea who I'm supposed to cover. Logan has the easy opportunity to get the tackle out in the flat at the line of scrimmage. It's another three and out. Fourth and 14. I think it was fourth and 13 last time out. And well, it's been two minutes. Less than that, and we're getting the ball right back. This one could be a blowout. We would have the chance to score maybe a record high number of points in this game if we tried to. But who knows if we need to. Frank Blair? Oh, a great punt return. Not quite able to take it to the house, though. Well, let's look to the air. See what we can do. Maurice Tate on the play action. Why? Right bumper's wide open. If we can get it, Durham! Durham Finch just turned around. He had a wide open touchdown and stopped running. That is so frustrating. That should have been the easiest touchdown of his career. Instead, we're having to hand it off to him, and then we have a third down that we have to deal with. 
We gotta, like, find a new running back or wide receiver coach because that is just unacceptable. On third down, we'll step back to throw. I'm going outside the pocket. I'm just gonna... Durham might have been open. We're just gonna run Maurice. Sometimes I just don't feel confident enough to, to make those close throws, but... Hey, as long as we're getting positive yards, it's all good, right? One-on-one, -on -one, out on the left side. I'm throwing this one. It's going to be picked. Threw it a little bit too early. Oh, that's a shame. Maybe could have had a touchdown to John Wilson, but DB knew what I was throwing before I threw it. Minute and six now on the clock for Indiana. Was hoping that we could have scored, like, another touchdown. Could have been, like, 35 nothing at the half, but here we are. They are stepping back to throw, getting rid of it, but quarterback not all that accurate today. Has to sail that one out of bounds. The big news for us is even if they come out in a formation with a bunch of running backs, we know that they are going to just pass the ball, so we don't have to worry too much. Quarterback scrambling. Oh, this is going to be a big one. We're trying to strip the ball. Doesn't work out, and he gets a first down. Good news is that uh, they took a timeout, so it'll stop the clock, but also... That means that he's not willing to slide down. So we will be able to strip the ball if he keeps doing that. Or he could just take the sack. I'm going to start taking timeouts myself. Hoosiers get the ball to start the third quarter. So anything that we can do to score one more time this half would be phenomenal for us. This throw out in the flat kind of gave that one up. But we drive him out of bounds. And that'll stop the clock, making it third and 15. And you got to feel like this should be an easy stop for us. Just have to get them off the field one more time. They're going to hand it off. Take the time out there. I mean, they were just trying to burn the clock, but all they did was make us burn the time out. Guess we'll send Frank Blair back one more time. What's the harm in that? See if we can get another decent return. The last one, he was decently close to taking it. The distance, this one should be fieldable. If we can get some blocks, I'm trying to cut it across the field. Frank Blair, a lot of space. Can he outrun number 20 to the corner? He made the... Oh, wow. Too easy. It was exciting, but I thought he was going to get tackled. He made the corner. Jones was never going to catch him. And there's our touchdown. I'm going to go for the onside kick. That was a bit of an anticlimactic call there, but I just kind of lost my words when he missed the tackle. We're definitely giving Indiana a good field position, but it's because I want them to go for this because I want those 35 points. So it may end up kind of backfiring and giving up a field goal. Certainly don't expect them to score a touchdown. But with 27 seconds left, quarterback steps back to pass. He's going to scramble immediately. And London's going to get the tackle. I used the hit stick and it almost burned us, but somehow it worked out. His quarterback not scared to take a hit, but also a little bit scared to stay in the pocket for longer than a quarter second on some of these plays. Carter getting in there. Right over Dallas Miller's head. Should have been a pick. Jamar Freund has the first down, though, with 17 seconds to go. They're going to step back again, expecting a throw. Clock is moving. One timeout for the Hoosiers. We hit him. It's incomplete. Andrew Coleman, three of six on the day for just 25 yards. And in the right scenario here, we could still see us getting the ball back. My biggest hope here is just that we can force a turnover. Again pass caught clock's gonna burn down i'm gonna take a timeout and see if we can bait them into throwing it here well maybe not field goal formation is out for the hoosiers uh i mean we're gonna get at least one more chance here a kick return if nothing else gonna take the kick return but the way that we've been going this is in the end zone yeah we're gonna take a touch back here two seconds we can throw up a hail mary we've been close and against this defense i feel like we have a shot it's 28 to 3. They're pressed up. One deep safety. We don't have a whole lot of good matchups on our side, but just need a, a little bit of time. <laughs> Heave one up. This is not going to work. <laughs> I mean, a big part of that is that Maurice can't throw the ball, you know, 80, 90 yards downfield, but also just that they covered that really well. 28 to 3 at the half. Can't be too upset with it. We've played well on both sides of the ball. Defense has been phenomenal. Only reason they gave up his field goal is because I was getting greedy. Uh, the offense close to being, you know, spot on perfect. But if we just play this way for the rest of the game, it's certainly going to be a blowout. Kind of a shame that I gave up the chance at the shutout. But yeah, we weren't expecting that to happen anyways. So we can again boot this one away. The Jones to Jones connection stays alive. 
And they're going to bring it out of the end zone. Graham, decent job gunning down. He keeps getting this stiff arm cheese, though, and that brings him out to the 30. That's annoying. That is it's one thing that's certain. I'm going to keep bringing the pressure, though. We'll see what they can do to combat it. Trying to do anything. Quarterback scrambling, and again, we get the sack. Maybe eventually. <laughs> A loss of four. The coverage is holding up just long enough for the pressure to get to this QB. Feels like almost all of these uh, drives start with us kind of pushing them back. And then, oh, an interception. Is that Ron Johnson, the third? Well, there's the turnover that we wanted at the end of the half. They tried to throw the slant. He jumps in front of the route. And there it is, the defense again, getting another stop. I feel like we haven't played against uh, a quarterback that's struggled this much in a while. Play action pass on first down. We're going to have to scramble here. Outside the pocket, right bumper could have been open, but why should I not scramble here? Oh, no, this is coming way back. I'm expecting a clipping on this play. Holding. Holding's not as bad, but should have been a first down. Instead, it's a first in 20. Well, you hate to see it, but uh, I don't know. That means we could get more yards with the offense. Five minutes left in this third quarter. A minute gone already. And Durham Finch got a couple on the counter. That was not my best running on that play. He's averaging about five per carry. Uh, and he should have a, a receiving touchdown, but he's just too much of a goober. Uh, a right bumper, I mean. We'll open over the middle. Brian Curtis can't hold on through the contact. Or he's put that one just a little bit too high. Well, it's third and a mile. We'll see what we can do on this one. Trying to pick up the first down. The might be four down territory. A is open. Late throwing it. Zach Wilson was wide open on the corner route, but we get hit as we're throwing. It's fourth and 17. And this would be a 53-yard field goal. And I refuse to punt the ball away this far in our opponent's half. So we're going to step back to throw. We'll see what we can do with it. Obviously can't be too confident, but we'll send some guys deep. We'll see what plays out. They're only rushing three. I'm heaving this one up. Durham Finch passes, man. Can't hold on to it. And Durham Finch twice through the air has let us down in this game. He was completely uncovered. Hit him right in the hands. And he just dropped the football. That is so annoying. 28 total yards for Indiana at this point. Hopefully we can keep him slowed down here. I want another turnover. That might be me being a little bit too greedy. Pressure coming. Quarterback sacked again. That drops him to 21 total yards. So once again, we start off an Indiana drive with them losing yards, and now they have to fight to make those back up, but who knows if they'll be able to. Second and 17, stepping back to throw. Quarterback's going to scramble, and we'll hit him with the hit stake after just a gain of one. 0 for 4 on their third down conversions thus far in the game. I mean, what can they do? Will we see them convert one of these? Again, stepping back to throw. I left my man open, but it's all just to give up a yard. So we can't even be too upset with it. I mean, the defense is doing really good, but it's like, it's hard for me to get excited because I know how bad Indiana is. Like if we did this against, uh, you know, top 10 Michigan, you're feeling real good about the performance, but this is what you should expect. As again, just my bad returning on the day means that Frank Blair just gets a mediocre chance at that punt. I'm going to say if we can score one more touchdown, make it 35 to 3, then we will bring in the backups. But until then, it's going to be the starters. And kudos to Indiana this half. Slowed us down a decent amount. I guess the question is going to become can they slow us down enough? I'm sending Mitchell deep. No deep safeties on the play. We'll see them one in the middle shifts over. X could be open. I don't know. I saw a little bit of uh, interference there. Maybe got a little bit lucky they didn't pick it off. I'm just waiting for it. We're scoring a touchdown on one of these. Just uh, a matter of which one. And I'm heaving up another bomb here. A prayer for Jody Gentry. And he can't hold on to it. Little bit of contact. I don't know. I've started chucking. And it's really uh, been detrimental to our offense. But again, I'm going for this. I, <laughs> I just can't be bothered to punt the ball away. Outside the pocket. Nobody really open. B actually was wide open. X is wide open. I'm keeping it on the ground. Maurice Tate gets the first down. These days, I just don't know if I can trust the receivers to hold on to a pass wide open. So why not just get it done on the ground, keep the drive alive, and then we can throw that ball on a first or second down instead. Just 
Trying to keep it safe. I don't know. Durham Finch Jr., a chance maybe to run for a little bit more. He's getting some beautiful blocks, and Durham Finch, 52, misses the tackle, and he's going to take it the distance. 41 yards into the end zone, puts us over 100 on the day. That's going to hit that 35-point mark with 218 left in the third quarter, and that was just a beautiful run from the entire offense. All right, well, 35-3. Uh, I guess it's time for the second stream to come in. I said that's what the bar was going to be. We'll see if the defense can continue to hold, but it's definitely going to be a lot more difficult. So let's do our mass subs. Second team offense and defense, and let's hope for the best. This is the sort of thing, though, that's really good for getting playing time to all our players, avoiding the transfers and all that. Uh, get some awareness up as well for other players. Maybe we can come out with an interception or we can get some sacks. Coleman getting popped around by everybody today. I've only had to call like three different plays on defense because they've all been working out so far today. Second and 17 again. Stepping back, quarterback scrambling and he, again, he gets, gets a sack. He must have lost at least a couple of feet. David Jamison two in a row there. 0 oh, for 5 on third down. So that's the backup defensive tackle making huge plays. Kind of expecting a man to go in motion here. They do so. And they're going to step back to pass. I'm leaving them a lot of space here just so that we can get the three and out. And the second string defense doing just as good as the first. This one has really gotten out of hand. A minute left in the third quarter. Curious to see what the second string... Uh, defense can do maybe the second string punt return is that stan williams field in this one makes the first guy kind of miss and he gets it across midfield well maurice tate can sit albert johnson it's been a while since we've seen him for a while it seemed like he was going to be the guy this season but uh not the case good news is i know he can take a couple of shots keeps it on the read option gets a couple of yards you might say this is a little bit early to be doing this, but I don't think so. We're going to start burning the clock. Yes, the second string team is our offense is in, and I want them to get plenty of opportunities, but there's no need to risk any injuries in a game that we're absolutely dominating. So end of the third quarter. We could get into the fourth, 35-3. Again, the only reason we've even given up points is because we gifted them field goal position. Uh, but, man... This has just been an absolute blowout. One quarter to play. I don't know if Albert's going to be able to make a pass like this, but on third and eight, we're going to step back and give it the shot. B could be open. Oh, my gosh. All right, so I guess I got to re-warm up a quarterback, and on fourth and eight, I'm going to punt this one away. We're trying to keep these guys at three points. I already gifted them really good field position once. So on this fourth down, we'll go for the punts. If it lands, we could get a decent bounce or he could muff it. And, oh, I thought we had it there for a second. Jones almost unable to pick that one up. So the defense coming back out onto the field. First and 10 for the Hoosiers. What can they do? They'll step back to pass on first down. Plenty of time for the quarterback. Has to get it away. A broken tackle. Oh, that should have been dropped at the line. Let's see what we can do here. I'm bringing pressure on this second down. I'm kind of expecting the run. Stover coming in, unguarded, and there's the sack again. Andrew Coleman is spending half of this game on the ground. That one's enough to make it uh, third and ten. So we backed him all the way back up to the line. Again, expecting Doucette to go in motion. It's going to be the same play that we've seen Every single time, they're going to step back to throw. Quarterback, all the time in the world, gets it off. Lewis can't get the tackle, and they finally convert on third down. They absolutely did not deserve uh, that conversion. We had the stop, just couldn't make the tackle with a second-string guy. But that gives us a chance now, I guess, to just continue to hit this quarterback. And at this point, why not? I want to either force him into a bad throw or for some sort of fumble. So we will continue to blitz. We can hit him again. Bracken again. We can't get the tackle on this guy. Royal comes in to finish it, but it lost a two. We failed on the last third and 10. We'll hope to do it this time. Back the coverage off. They're not in that same third down set that we've seen for a while, but they will step back to throw. The quick throw intercepted. Who is that by? Moore comes down with it. That was a great pick. Third turnover of the game. The fans here are booing. Can't say that I blame them here at Memorial Stadium. They have not seen a good product on the field today. As Stan Williams is going to get the chance for a decent run. 
nice first down. Just absolutely demoralizing for this Hoosier team. How about the triple option? This one could hurt him quite a bit. A chance for a late pitch, that diving tackle. That was a touchdown otherwise. Oh, that hurts. I didn't pitch it earlier because I thought we had made it past that linebacker. But he ends up saving the day for his team on that down. Can he do it on this one? Stan Williams can't stretch it to the edge. Only gets a yard and it's third and five. And just because I know this is the only way that we can complete a pass with Albert right now, we're going to try the slip screen. Give it to Stan. That should be an easy completion. Can he get any blocking? No, absolutely no blocking. I threw it maybe a little bit late. Got a yard. It's fourth and four. And we'll keep the offense on the field this time. We can continue to burn the clock this way. And if we convert, it looks really, really bad for Indiana. So Jerome Simmons will come in for his first touch of the game. He shoved off the first defender, but the blocking was just not there. So a turnover on downs for us. But if Indiana had uh, any sort of pride, they would just throw this one away or run the ball here. Don't try anything too stupid. It is a handoff up the middle. And I don't know. Maybe we will have to bring a little bit of pressure here just to prevent them from picking up too many yards. Second and five. Kind of expecting the handoff. Could be an option. Baited the quarterback into keeping it, but still gave up three. It's third and one. They just took a timeout. Well, if they're going to do that, the first team's coming back in. Uh, hopefully we don't have an injury, but that is unacceptable. I don't know what they're playing for at this point, but I just cannot allow that. Third and one. We'll see if they want to try this again. They do get the first down, but they are asking to get beat down harder now really didn't think that it would come to this but here we are first and ten they are going to continue to run which is why i'm confused why they took the time out and they take another one there incredibly disrespectful we gifted them three points and this is how they treat us <laughs> there's a stop you know what i'm gonna start taking timeouts Avery Rawls able to get in and get the stop on that one as i'm going to end up expecting a pass on this play third and four trying to keep the drive alive they do step back quarterback scrambling around throws it off his foot or back foot it's incomplete that was stupid he could have scrambled easily for that one and it's the punt team out but we're gonna try to defend this instead of the safe zone because that never works we're in the safe man and they will actually punt this ball away it's a pretty decent punt unfortunately for them i'm not having any of it that one got inside the five to about the seven and it's time for us to see if we can find somebody deep. Maurice Tate just needs to get outside the pocket. Right bumper could be wide open. Y could be wide open. Durham Finch actually holds on to that one. That puts us near midfield. Got to go in the hurry up here. Can we get this one off? Looking for a touchdown. Jody Gentry on that deep post could be the man. B wide open. Can Wilson come down with it? It was underthrown by Maurice by just a little bit. Well, five seconds. I'm certainly not done yet. Uh, let's send a bunch of guys deep here. And we'll see if they can cover it. Just got to have enough time. I have literally all the time in the world here. Throw it up for Mitchell. Sean makes one man miss. He's not going to get into the end zone with the clock expired. We're able to kind of stat pad a little bit there. Oh my gosh. Maurice had like three minutes to get that pass off. Easy win at the end of the day, 35-3. Indiana has gone down as uh, a team that doesn't respect us and will note that for future seasons. Certainly not putting in second stringers next year at any point during the game. But a nice win. Maybe keep propelling us forward in the rankings, but definitely one that we expected as, uh, you know, it's not often that we see a team that is lower overall than us. Man. Look at those numbers. Zero rushing yards allowed. 51 passing yards allowed. Three turnovers created and only four first downs. What a dominant performance. They had the ball for a decent amount of time too, so only enough time for us to get 154 of our own and 160 through the air, but I don't know if we've seen anything more dominant from our defense ever. That was incredible. Uh, Durham Finch, offensive player of the game. A couple of touchdowns, almost 100. Rushing yards, uh, almost 50 pass or receiving yards. Should have been well over 50 receiving yards and a touchdown, but it is what it is. Bryant London, defensive player of the game with two sacks. And again, like a lot of other games, there could have been a million other guys eligible for that honor. Again, though, just a solid, complete game on both sides of the football.
That one's going to move us to 7-3 and three in the country. Two games left. And we can advance the week here towards our first buy of the uh, upcoming end of the season and see if maybe we can, I don't know, sneak up a few spots in the rankings. We are still in a bunch of recruiting battles and William Wilson committed to Michigan. He still had a visit with us and we were like, I don't know, 600 points behind. I thought that we would have had a chance to take this to the offseason, but the 80 overall corner does not decide to come hang out with us, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, ranking wise, we stay at 17. So no chaos around us, except I thought, man, there was one that was close. Michigan survived at Michigan State late into the game. That was 21 all, but they are able to kind of turn on the Jets at the end to stay undefeated. And our top four looking real strong. Georgia, Auburn, Michigan, LSU, the SEC absolutely dominating. The good news is some of these guys will have to start playing each other. LSU could lose to Bama this week. Michigan has to play at number 24, Penn State, so you never know there. But just uh, no losses, huh? Notre Dame at number five took their second loss to Navy. Anything else? Uh, Coastal sits behind us. They'll play number 10, Tennessee. Wisconsin plays number 11, Nebraska. There's chances for upsets as number 19, Florida, lost again, which you hate to see. <laughs> we needed them to keep winning. Syracuse lost, but... Nothing above us in the rankings that seems to have mattered. So a bit of a shame there, but that's just the way that these things go sometimes. How about a quick look at our award semifinalists before we end this one? I'm just going to scroll through the lists and see if we have anybody for the Benerick. Oh my gosh, it's it's all Eagles. Uh, Troy Carter, Dallas Miller, Bryant, Bryant London, and Leon Logan, as well as Ron Johnson III and Austin Sims, uh, semifinalists for the Benerick. That's good for the Nagurski. Carter, Miller, Sims, anybody else? And London. Uh, for the O'Brien, nobody. But, hey, we're getting some nice defensive recognition. Those guys have played really well so far this season. Uh, wait a second. I just saw Mike Fontaine as a uh, semifinalist for the Doak Walker. He's in his senior season. It's been a long time since we've uh, seen Mike Fontaine's name. Anything for the Mackie? No. I am seeing a lot of Coastal players on these lists, which is good news. Our legacy kind of uh, sustaining there. Carter and Sims for the Lombardi. For the Buckus, we've got London and Logan, both linebackers, getting some recognition. Miller and Ron Johnson there for the Thorpe. Nobody for the Groza or the guy, but I wouldn't be surprised if we saw, yeah, Frank Blair with the Jet. Just two punt return touchdowns, no kick return touchdowns, uh, but it's enough for him to be at the top of that list right now. I would feel confident if we could score one more special teams touchdown with the senior from Alamo, Texas. Unfortunately, though, that's going to have to do it. Exciting to see that we're finally getting a bunch of players on those award lists. But if we're not winning the national championship, does it really matter? <laughs> Hopefully we can start to pick up guys that will help us with that uh, in the bye week. But again, unfortunately, that's going to have to be the end of this episode. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to hit the like button. That helps me to know that you guys are still enjoying these videos and also helps this video get pushed out to more people. So it's an easy way to support the channel. Subscribe if you haven't done so already, and then head down to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster, where I have recently joined a big online dynasty on Twitch, so uh, it's going to be interesting. We're taking over for Uncle Sam's Rejects on Texas. He's left us in a good spot, but I don't have a lot of experience with online dynasties in this game. There's also links to my Twitter uh, our community discord, a link to become a channel member, and of course, a link to the college football revamp mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. All that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the gray boys, and wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios.